With Shadow Generations approaching with every passing day, I thought that today I would take a look at predicting some of the levels that we are going to be getting in the Shadow Generations campaign. Now we know a couple of them that have been featured in trailers and all that, so I thought what I would do is I would guess and make my predictions on what the rest of the levels will be. Now I'm not counting boss fights in this, I am just counting standard levels that you would play. That is what I am counting. Boss fights are their own thing. Maybe I can make a separate video on what the boss fights are um, if people really want that, but really I'm just going off of basic levels. So, how many levels are we looking at? Well, the base generations game has nine levels, each with two acts. Now, they've said that Shadow Generations isn't going to be as long as Sonic Generations, which makes sense. So, what I'm doing is, though, I am still going off the basis that there will be nine levels. However, one act each. So it is shorter there where it's just one act instead of two. So we're going to give nine levels here that I think could be for Shadow Generations. Now, four of them we actually already know because they have been shown in trailers. We have Radical Highway from Sonic Adventure 2, Space Colony Arc from Sonic Adventure 2, Bullet Station from Sonic Heroes, and Kingdom Valley from Sonic 06. Those are the four we have seen in trailers that we know are going to be in this campaign. So what is the other ones? What are the other levels here? Well, here are my predictions. One I have made is Gun Fortress from Shadow the Hedgehog. As this is going to be going through Shadow's history and all that, I think no better level than Gun Fortress where he infiltrates Gun and where in certain areas, one of them he fights Black Doom in the Gun Fortress, depending on what, you know, path you're going on because there's multiple paths uh, but I think the gun fortress could make for a good level for a re a remaster a remake of it because again we're going through shadows history and his history is very closely tied to gun and we're gonna see gun take down Maria and all that type of stuff you know so I think showing the gun fortress would be a good level to redo for uh, shadow generations the next level I'm going to pick also from Shadow Generations is the Black Comet. Now, this one again ties into the Black Arms. You know, we're going to see Black Doom in this, and the Black Comet is, you know, the Black Arms base, essentially. Uh, so why not have Shadow confront Black Doom in the Black Comet? We can have that as a level there as well. I think that'd be cool. Now, there is bits of Black Comet that maybe we can get rid of, like the part where you're standing on the like the thing I, I i know i'm being very specific here but the part where you stand on the thing and you kind of have to like move it around it's like a vehicle portion type thing yeah maybe we can get rid of that and just keep black comet as like you know on the ground that'd be nice uh but i think those two levels from shadow the hedgehog are fine levels to pick gun fortress which ties into shadow and gun and black comet which ties into shadow and the black arms so those are the two levels from Shadow the Hedgehog that I am picking. And of course, when I went and picked these levels, I picked the game Shadow as a part of it. That's the whole point. This is about Shadow. And uh, he does not have as many picks as Sonic. So some of these I've had to really deep for. Uh, the next two levels are ones that might seem out of left pocket. But I'm going to pick them and I'll explain why. First one is Sunset Heights from Sonic Forces. Yes. Now... Why did I pick Sunset Heights from Sonic Forces? Well, Sunset Heights in the Forces campaign is where Sonic goes to confront Shadow and be like, why are you with Infinite? What's going on? And that's where we figure out that it's not actually Shadow. It's a phantom Shadow. It's fake. It's an illusion. It's not the real Shadow. And that's when Shadow joins your side in the Forces campaign. So there's that as well. Uh, but why did I even pick Sonic Forces? Because, well, of course, when Sonic Generations came out, Forces wasn't even a thing, obviously. But now, with Shadow Generations, we can look back and be like, well, we can now add some of the more future ones in here as well. Now, again, this does this might break the plot a bit because this, this for Shadow is supposed to take place concurrently with Sonic Generations, right? So Shadow will not have known of Infinite. But with the Time Eater being a of course a time traveling like a gimmick you know weebly wobbly timely wimey stuff maybe we can have shadow see some of his future instead of his past 
we can show Shadow a bit of his future, which we couldn't really do with Sonic. Sonic, we had to look at the past because obviously we can't. They didn't even have forces. This, maybe forces was just a concept at this point. But now that we are doing the thing where we're retro, where we're going back, uh, we can retroactively show Shadow his future a bit. So Sunset Heights from Forces, I think, yeah, would work. And the next one, also from Forces, but this one is from the episode Shadow DLC, is Eggman's facility. Now this is where many know where Infinite was born. Shadow kicked the crap out of this dude. Beat him so bad that this dude was just distraught. He destroyed this man. But this guy went to Eggman and begged to be part of his experiment with the Phantom Ruby. So, this is again another big point where it shows Shadow created Infinite right here. Now, this could again be something to show Shadow hey, this is your future. You create a monster in the future, you know? So, I don't know. I think also Eggman's facility is just a nice fun level. Also, you know, Sunset Heights, Eggman's facility, I think they're fine levels in Forces, and that's one of the biggest compliments I think you can give that game, is that you had two good levels here. We're going to poach them and put them in our game. And then the final level is Radical Train from Sonic 06. Why did I pick Radical Train? Well, it's because it's the only level in the, in the game's stories that take place at the exact same time. Now, in each story, Sonic... Shadow and Silver, you go through every level, but you go through every level at a different point, right? You don't go through the same levels at the same way in each one. Like Sonic could start, this is an example, Sonic could start with Kingdom Valley, then go to, uh, oh my god, what is it called? The Volcano level. I am so forgetting it. Cave Chaos or something like that? Then he could do that. Then he could go to Radical Train, you know, and then he goes to Crisis City, you know, like and then Silver could do it the completely opposite way, where he goes to, uh, Christ, he starts off in Crisis City, you know? So you do the same levels, but in a different order. This is the only one in each story that happens at the exact same time, at the exact same point. They're all here at this level. And plus, you get to fight a train at the end. So that's cool. So that's why I picked Radical Train, because it is the only level that they all go at the exact same time. And those are my predictions for what could be the levels possibly in Shadow Generations or his portions. Those are just my picks of what I would do. Uh, I imagine Sega, when they reveal what the levels are, are probably going to make more sense than any of my picks. Maybe I'll get lucky and one or two of these will come true. I mean, we have to get at least one from Shadow the Hedgehog, right? We have to at least get a level from Shadow the Hedgehog. At least. I mean, they brought back freaking Black Doom, so... We have to get something from Shadow the Hedgehog. But anyway, those are my picks. What are your picks for levels in the comments down below? Let me know in the comments down below. How do you feel about my picks as well? Love to get that discussion going. And I will see you guys all next time.